All right, so getting into our slides now, I wanna make sure that before you start this, you have watched videos one and two first. Okay, otherwise you will be completely lost as we get into these first couple of slides, all right? It's not enough to just fill out that worksheet. You have to actually understand this material if you're going to do well on this test, okay? The test that includes chapter four. So let's go ahead and get started. So we talked about this um, a little bit in the previous two videos about light and electromagnetic radiation that you can, if you have a longer wavelength, you'll have a shorter frequency and it'll be a lower energy. All right, remember these two go together. Frequency and energy are directly related. So low frequency means low energy. Shorter wavelength, higher frequency, higher energy. Okay, and remember we have our um, speed of light constant and we have our Planck's constant. Okay, noticing that, and this is a big tripping point, that our units for the speed of light are in meters. Okay, so whenever you're dealing with speed of light and wavelength of light, wavelength is often given in nanometers, so you have to do conversion. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into our first problem here, 1A. So a frequency, a photon with frequency of 7.23 times 10 to the 4 hertz, what is its wavelength in nanometers? Now, if you've watched those first two videos, which you should have, I'd like you to try and pause this video and work this out yourself if you can, then come back. All right, now hopefully you have made an attempt at this so that we can um, sort of come at this from a practice standpoint. Now, for each of these problems, I'm gonna put up, to begin with, the equations that you'll be given, okay? You'll be given the speed of light equation, C equals lambda times nu, and you'll also have E equals H nu, which also equals H times C over lambda. Okay, so I want you to take a look at these and start to reason out what you're being asked for and what you're being given. In this problem, you're given a frequency and you're asked for a wavelength. And the equation that has frequency and wavelength and a constant is this one. Okay, so we're gonna use that equation right there. And we're asked for the wavelength. So let's rearrange that equation to solve for the wavelength. So C equals lambda nu. If I want the wavelength by itself, if I divide both sides by nu, then C over nu equals our wavelength. Okay, so my units of speed of light are meters and seconds. My units of hertz are the same thing as saying one over seconds, or we'll sometimes say seconds to the minus one. Those mean the same thing. So my units match up. I have seconds and seconds, so I can just do the division. So 3.00, times 10 to the eight meters per second for the speed of light. So that's C. Nu is our frequency, 7.23 times 10 to the 14 inverse seconds. My seconds on the bottom cancel seconds on the bottom, on the bottom of the bottom, <laughs> so to speak. And we end up with an answer of 4.15 times 10 to the minus seven meters. Now in wavelengths, we usually put things in terms of nanometers, which is what you're asked for here. So one nanometer is 10 to the minus nine meters. And I could write this as 4.15 times 10 to the two, but it's easier just to say 415 nanometers. All right, so 1B, go ahead and give us a pause. See if you can work this one out for yourself. And so, like I said, I'm gonna put these equations up here so you can get used to looking at them and trying to think of which equation you're going to use. All 
right? So the question isn't asking anything about energy, or excuse me, it is asking about energy. So I can right away ignore this set of equations, okay? Now I've gi I'm given the frequency and I'm asked for the energy. Remember, H is a constant. I know that number. So I'm gonna look at this piece right here. Remember, nu is our frequency. All right, so E equals Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. All right, so this is H. And then our frequency, 7.23 times 10 to the 14 hertz, which is inverse seconds. Right, that's our nu. And we get an answer of 4.79 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Okay, because our, cance our seconds will cancel out, <clears throat> leaving joules behind. All right, and 1C. All right, so we already figured out, and I'm gonna come back up, we were asked in the first question, what is our frequency? All right, so our frequency was 415 nanometers. Okay, so looking at this chart here, this is the visible spectrum. All right now, 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. So on the outsides of that visible spectrum, you have things like gamma rays and microwaves and radio and TV. And so if I were to sort of expand that out, all right, on this end, I have TV and radio. And on this end, I have gamma, which is what we get the Incredible Hulk from. And our visible spectrum occupies about that much room. All right, so what our eyes are able to perceive is actually a very tiny part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So, but to answer this particular question, so we know that our uh, wavelength is 415 nanometers. That's sitting right about there. Okay, so any farther, any, you know, any smaller in the wavelength, we get into the violet and indigo. So to answer this question, I'm going to go with uh, violet. All right, it's not quite in the blue. Blue's closer to 450 nanometers. And it turns out we were correct on all three of those questions. All right, so continuing on with some more of this type of work. So find the frequency of a photon of light with the wavelength of 723 nanometers. So we have our equations. So does the question ask anything about energy? The answer is no, so I can ignore all of these. All right? Because I know C and I know the wavelength, so I'm going to be looking at this uh, equation. So if I divide both sides by lambda, my wavelength, I get C over wavelength equals my frequency. Right now, here's where we got to be careful. Our units here are in meters. Right, we've got meters in our speed of light. And we're given our wavelength in nanometers. We need the units to match. So I need lambda in meters. Right, good thing everybody's so good at unit conversions by now, right? So 723 nanometers. And in one nanometer, there's 10 to the minus 9 meters. So that comes out to be 7.23 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And that's our lambda. That's our wavelength. So now I can plug that into my equation right here. So C is the speed of light. 
3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 7.23 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. My meters will cancel out, leaving me with 1 over seconds. So we have an answer of 4.15 times 10 to the 14 inverse seconds, or we can say hertz. All right, give us a pause, see if you can work this one out. Coming back, we have our equations. All right, so in this one, it is asking for energy. So I can right away forget about this. All right, I want the equation that's dealing with energy. Okay, and in this case, we are given a wavelength. So I'm going to use this version of the equation. All right, so again, I need I need in meters. All right, so. We already did this, but I'll go ahead and go through it again. So our wavelength in meters comes out to be 7.23 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. All right, so E, our energy, will be Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Remember, that's h times our speed of light, which is also a constant. Divided by our wavelength in meters. Okay, and we can think of that in parentheses together. Right, when we do that calculation, we should end up with an answer of 2.75 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Okay, and I know that it's joules because everything else cancels out. Meters cancel out meters. Seconds cancel out seconds. The only thing left is joules. And we were correct. All right, which wave has the highest frequency? So remember frequency, let's imagine, I said this in the video, if this is the span of one second, which one of these will give me more peaks in one second? And that happens to be the one that I'm drawing on. And that's the blue light. So remember that um, frequency is related to energy. So the higher the frequency, the more energy. So think about sunburns. Okay, those of us that get sunburns, quite a few of us do. Um, if you're blessed with skin that doesn't have sunburns, you are, you are um, lucky. But anyways, so ultraviolet radiation. So if I'm thinking about the, the visible spectrum, over here I have red at this end, and over here at this end I have the violet. And farther over still is the UV. Okay, so high energy at this end, right? The UV light has higher energy than any of the visible light, and that's what causes sunburns. Okay, because we have low frequency at that end, high frequency at this end. So UV light has an even higher frequency than, than violet light, and that's why it causes burns. Okay, 
question. So which of these does not describe a photon of light with the wavelength of 685 nanometers? Now, we can go through and calculate all of these, and it would be very, very tedious. Okay, but let's think about some of the things that are on here. Okay, first let's look at the red, right? This one right here. So if we have 685 nanometers, that's sitting right about there on our spectrum. So that one's okay. Right, it's definitely in the red range. And then as far as the rest of these, what I would suggest looking at is this stuff. Okay, so all the problems that we've done so far, we've had 10 to the minus 9 meters, so if I wrote that in correct scientific notation, that would be 6.85 times 10 to the minus 7. And that's in the same range as the kind of things that we've seen, times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Same thing with the hertz, same thing with the joules. But this minus 31 joules, that's pretty far out. Right, so I'm going to go with this answer as not describing the wavelength of light. Now that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully your brain isn't swimming too badly in um, depression and anxiety and, and worry. Um, just remember the things that we've done in the previous chapters. Keep those skills. I warned you that we'd be building on skills. So. The skills that you learned in the previous chapters with scientific notation and dealing with unit conversions, we're just going to keep building on those skills. So if you hold on to those, then this should work out just fine for you. Okay. So when we come back, we're going to start talking about um, how light relates to electrons.